Hey there, Thomas from Bricks here. I want to show you what is new in Bricks 136 that we just released. Um, seven new features in total. Actually, it's supposed to be a hotfix release after the massive 135 updates um, six days ago. But um, yeah, we actually have seven new features in this we, uh, release. Makes sense to uh, shoot a video and to show you how those work. Um, at the very top, the first feature we've got is the exclude condition. So now you can exclude your templates and your theme styles from specific pages according to a certain conditions. Um, let me show you how this works for the theme styles. So uh, I'm editing a page currently here. Go to theme styles and I can see that right now I'm applying this theme style to my entire website. What I can do now, I can add another condition and say I want to exclude. So this is going to be an exclude condition. So I don't want to show this theme style on my blog page. All right. Now I save here and let's just head over to our blog. Um, where is it? Is my block and you can see the theme style is not applied here. Um, you can see on this page how it lo looks like. Um, actually, I'm having a custom font here for my headings and then a Google font. I think this is Poppins um, for my body text. And you can see on the front end, those fonts are no longer applied. And that's because I am excluding my theme style from my blog page. Now, if I would remove this condition, uh, reload the block. You can see now the theme style is applied again. Let's jump to our uh, header template and let's exclude our header from the block. So you can see how this works for templates. I'm going to jump into my header template conditions right now. I'm showing it on my entire website. Same thing as my theme style before. And I want to exclude it. Individual and then block and you can also see up here so once you have all of your conditions closed you can see your excludes right away they are marked as an exclude here so now my header shows my entire website except for my block save it let's reload it and you can see the header no longer being loaded that's exactly what I wanted if I remove it reload it again you can see now it's being loaded again. That's new feature number one. Now the second new feature is the text element, one of the most used and most important elements on any website, of course, um, has received some great improvements. Um, <laughs> previously, you were not able to uh, add your headings there, at least not in the visual tab, and also not your images or your attachments in general. You now can. And I'm going to show you how this looks like. Let's close our header. Um, I have this page here. And this is the new rich text element. Um, you can see here, previously we just called this text. Now it's called rich text. We've also got another <laughs> a new element here, the basic text. We're going to have a look at that one afterwards. Um, but yeah, the text element is now rich text. And you can see here that I can now specify the HTML tag. So this one here is an H1. If I change this to H2, you can see how you can change this really easy. And same goes for the images. I have an image here, which is aligned left. So if I change this to align right, you can see on the canvas also how this one updates immediately and how it looks like. I have my text here. Then I have another uh, heading here, which of course I can also change to anything else that I want. And yeah, those are the abilities. Now you can resize your editor as well, the tiny MCE editor. And that's the new or the improved text element now named rich text to um, separate it from the new element, which is our basic text. Um, that's our third new item here. Um, you're now able, and this is really uh, the element that you should use if you just have a one liner of text, a text string, or maybe just a simple link. Um, 
as it was um, prior to Bricks 136, if you just want to edit a simple link, you would have to use the text element, but then the link was wrapped inside of a paragraph. And now that's no longer the case. You can just use the basic text element. I'm going to show you if I add this to my page. You can see this is how it looks like right now. I can still edit it. I can still click here and say I want to have this one bold. Um, and then now it's bold. Um, you can see here in the preview in this text area exactly the HTML that's being generated. You can change the HTML tag. By default it's a div. If you want to change it to anything else or use a custom HTML tag that's not in the list, you can do that. You can link the whole element to, let's say, an internal page. If I want to link this to my blog, now you can see this is a link. Um, on the underline, this is the theme style that applied to my links. Um, so yeah, this is how this looks like right now, this basic text element. Um, you can add line breaks. The line break that you add um, is going to be a line break like this, the BR tag. That's how this element works now here. This is the first iteration. If you have any suggestions how we can improve this further, don't hesitate um, to let us know. All right, let's remove that one or let's just keep it here. Let's save it and let's keep moving. Item number four, the WordPress admin bar. That's a real nice um, time saver here. If you're previewing your templates or you're just browsing your site on the front end and you want to quickly navigate, maybe you see a mistake in your header, what you can do, and I'm going to show this here on my... Let me go to this page actually. I'm going to preview that one. You already know that you have this edit with Bricks link. If I click here, I'm going to edit my page content. But now if I hover with my mouse over this link, you can now see I can also with one click jump right into the header builder or into the footer builder. So it tells me here I can edit my header. And then it's going to show you the template name. In my case, I'm just simply calling this header. And the same for the footer. You can go to your Bricks settings with one click. And you can also go to the Bricks template admin screen from here. So that's a um, simple feature, but very helpful. Um, a lot of people requested that one as well. Now, the next one, this is a bit more yeah, for developers, a developer feature, the code completion via Emmet. Um, so you can now um, speed up your HTML and CSS generation. I'm going to show you a few examples here. Maybe just start with some CSS code. Um, let's just say I have my container here and then I want to change the background color of my container so I can go to my custom CSS. You already know about this. And then I would add my root keyword. So now instead of having to type out all of my CSS properties, I can just use the um, all sorts of CSS abbreviations. And I'm going to leave a link to uh, the art Emmet article, the Emmet um, documentation in the video description below. But let's just say for the background color, what I can do now, I can just simply say BGC. You can already see here, there's this preview. So as soon as I hit tab, this preview is going to be added onto um, like inside my code here. So what I can say now, let's just say I want to have a background color red. Okay, this is what it's going to look like. So now I'm just going to press tab and you can now see I've applied my background color. Now you can do all kinds of things. If I want to put a margin, I'm just going to put in M and then I can say M10 tab and it's going to add a margin of 10. Now I can do the same thing for padding P 10 pixel um, top and bottom and then left and right. I want to have maybe two EM. All right, then it would add the padding just like that. And you can use this for all kinds of CSS properties. So that's really handy um, to quickly generate your CSS. You can do the same thing for the code element. Um, let's just maybe remove my text here. Let's go to the code element. Okay, this is my code here. I want to actually execute this code and I want to remove what I have here. And now you can use the CSS syntax um, class-based or element ID-based um, to generate 
even some complex and nested HTML structures. So I can show you one, um, for example, by adding a unordered, by creating an unordered list real quick. So I can say I want to have an unordered list that I'm gonna give a CSS clause of list wrapper, and inside of this unordered list I want to have some list items. So I'm gonna call them list item, and I want to have three items. And I'm going to populate them with some text. So I would just write something like this. And now if I hit tab, the HTML will be generated for me. So that's a real quick way. You can go much more complex. And um, once you wrap your head around the syntax. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave a link in the video description as well to the cheat sheet for this um, HTML abbreviations. That, but that's a real nice time saver here in Bricks 136. Let's keep moving to the uh, responsive background video. Um, let me grab one quickly for you and add it to our section here. Okay, so this is a background video. And previously, the way the background video was working in Bricks was that we just centered the background video, then we used some uh, transform scale to make it bigger that it's gonna <laughs> it's covering your entire container. Now Bricks is dynamically uh, calculating and updating the video dimension of your background video according to uh, the container dimensions. So whenever those change, either on window resize or maybe you change your mobile phone from uh, portrait to landscape, Bricks is automatically recalculating the dimensions of your background video um, yeah, for optimal results. Um, you can also specify the aspect ratio. Most videos by default are now using 16 to 9, but you can just add anything else here. If you want to have a video that's 4.3, um, you can create your video dimensions just like that, and then you can see that it's going to be updated here right away as well. Of course, you can still apply some scaling if you want to. And yeah, that's the responsive background video. Let's save again, and let's head to our last feature, and this is an extension of the uh, pseudo elements that we added in the previous release in Bricks 135. Um, you can now add the content CSS property to your before and after pseudo elements. And let me show you how you can do this here on this last section that I have here. I have this price here. And what I want to do now, just a real quick example, is I want to add some content before that I want to style differently, but I don't want to have to create another element for this. So what I can do now, I can go up here. We already know about this from Bricks 135. And I can create a pseudo class or a pseudo element. I haven't done this yet. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create my before pseudo element. So I'm going to put in a double colon and then I'm going to name this one before, hit enter, and now you can see the pseudo element has been created. Um, I actually already added this one previously, that's why you can now see this <laughs> setting is already here. So I have my dollar sign here, and what I can do now, because this is, has been added here, right before my text, I can style this differently. So I can say I want this to be a different color, or I want this to be a different font size as well. Make this a bit smaller. I can do this. And I can also do the same thing for my after content. So I'm going to put in a double colon after, create. And then I have this per month in here, which I also already created previously in my tests. Um, so that's why I have this string here. And this one is actually also already styled. I already put a background and color here text color. And yeah, that's basically how you can work with this before and after. Um, of course, you can also create, um, if I were to create something here on my container, which is not a text, but I mean, I can get creative with this. Um, I had also something here already. You can see I have some before contents. If I click here, ah, you can see this is what I added here uh, before container. But yeah, this can be anything. I can just put in an empty content. You can say, I want to have a background color. And then I just need to give it a width and a height. If you're familiar with CSS and working with those um, pseudo elements, you know what I'm doing here. 
Now this is a dimension. Now I can change my positioning to absolute, put it at the top right corner, just like that, without having to create another element and trying to figure out how to position it. I can just work with those before and after pseudo elements. And those are all the new features in Bricks 136. Make sure to check out the improvements down here as well. Then also again, um, some bug fixes here. And yeah, this update comes just six days after um, our last major release. So it was supposed to be a hot fix. It turned into a much bigger release. Um, yeah, we hope you enjoy um, working with Bricks 136. And I see you in the next update. Bye-bye.